My name is Allie and today I'm going to be doing my wrap-up, my full all-inclusive wrap-up for the month of February which was the booktube games and I read 20 books this month so strap yourselves in, buckle up, get a snack. This is going to be a very long wrap-up. I can already feel it. So I think you guys remember that I did do a mid-month wrap-up so I'm going to kind of you know not talk too in-depth about the first couple of books but I will get into some of my favorites from like the first half of the month and then I will definitely go into more detail with the end half of the month so if you want to hear more of my thoughts on the beginning half of the month I will leave that link down below hopefully I really hope that I'm going to do that and yeah let's get right on into the books because there are so many and I really want to talk about about all of them. So the first book that I read this month was actually one that I had to finish from the month before and I only counted the pages that I read in that in February so yeah I'm still counting it for this month and that is The Rose Society by Marie Lu. This is the second book in the Young Elite series and it was so good. I gave it a four out of five stars and I really enjoyed it. I cannot wait for the sequel and I think that I'm gonna put it into my TBR for March so hopefully I will be able to get to it this month. The next book I read was on Scribd and that was Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds and that is a book that was written in verse and it's about this boy and his brother just died and he wants to go exact revenge on his brother's death and basically Long Way Down is a story of him going all the way down in the elevator and on every stop someone from his past comes into the elevator and it's just such a wonderful beautiful haunting story. It was so good. I love Jason Reynolds poetry. It is just so beautiful and I really want to read like a whole poetry book from him. Like it doesn't even have to be a novel written in verse. It could just be a poetry book and I would love that so much. His poetry so good. <laughs> the third book that I read this month was The Book With No Pictures by BJ Novak and basically it's just a children's picture book and it was on script and I'm like, I really only read it because I was like, how are they going to do this picture? Well, I guess it's not a picture book because it's a book with no pictures, but how are they gonna do this children's book on an audiobook? I'm just like, I, don't, I wasn't really sure how that was gonna work and it was actually kind of funny. And yeah, so I read that as well. I mean, I didn't, I don't think I rated it because I'm like, what do you kind of, I don't know what kind of rating to give that kind of book. So I think if I did have a kid or if there was a child in my life that was like that age, I would probably get it for them because it was kind of a funny book and I like BJ Novak, so. The fourth book that I read this month was King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. And this is the first book in a new series that is basically all about Nikolai, but it also has point of views from Nina and Zoya. So this book was amazing. I gave it five out of five stars and I absolutely loved it so much. I think I also have a review on it so if you want to check out my blog or my Goodreads it's there but basically I just loved this book so much and if you didn't know I did read the Grissa trilogy this year for the first time or last year technically for the first time and I kind of I enjoyed it but it wasn't like the greatest thing I'd ever read so uh, I was really interested in getting into this book because Nikolai was my favorite character from the Grisha trilogy. It was so nice revisiting this these characters in this world, especially having jumped from like the Grisha trilogy was her first few books and now that she's done, you know, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom and they were absolutely phenomenal, blew me out of the water. It's kind of interesting to see her go back to like Nikolai and Zoya and all of these like older characters in her writing now because it's improved so much. So it was really interesting and like the story was so rich and compelling and the background stories for both Zoya and Nikolai were so intriguing and like I want to read like 95 books about them. Like they are such good characters. And even in the Grisha trilogy, their stories were very rich, especially Zoya and Nikolai. Like I really like those characters more than I liked, you know, 
all of the other ones, but <laughs> they were definitely my favorites. Um, I just really loved the storyline. It was so interesting to see these, you know, different point of views for like different stories. And Zoya and Nikolai's story are kind of like intertwined, but then Nina has her own sort of story and that was really interesting as well. And I really like the newer characters that we get to meet from her story. So yeah, I am so excited for the next book and I cannot wait for it. And yes, I hope that the cover is just as beautiful as this one because this one is just gorgeous. Like, oh my goodness, it's just so beautiful. The fifth book that I read in February was also by Jason Reynolds and that one was called For Everyone. And it's basically a poem. I don't really know how to explain it. I read it on script, so I listened to him, you know, speak it. And it was just so good. It's basically, a poem for creative people like any sort of creative out there he doesn't really specify specifically what who he's talking to but I found that it really really hit me like in the feels it was just so good and it just is so beautiful his writing is just so gorgeous like I don't really have words to explain how much I love his poetry it is so good I think Jason Reynolds is my new favorite poet his I just it's just mind-blowing like I love his poetry I could listen to him talk all day long his voice is really nice and yeah I just I think that if you're a creative person if you're a writer an artist or whatever you have a dream then I would definitely recommend this poem or this book or whatever you want to call it it was so good especially listen to it as an audiobook because his voice is so good and he knows exactly how to deliver his poems so yes I 100% recommend that to anyone and I really loved it. I think I gave it five out of five stars. The sixth book I read was also a poetry book and that was The Princess Saves Herself on this one by Amanda Lovelace and I loved this poetry collection so much. I also listened to it on Scribd and Amanda also narrates that audiobook as well so that was really nice and I had never read this poetry collection before which is kind of like mind-boggling like how have I never read this and it was really really good I can't remember if I gave it a four to five stars or a five out of five stars but I know that I really enjoyed it and I think it's definitely a good poetry collection to experience as an audiobook and I feel like she really knows how to put together a narrative within her poetry collections which I find some other poets kind of struggle with a little bit but she has a very clean clear-cut narrative and I really appreciated that. The next book I read in February was Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. Really enjoyed it. It was a very good, solid children's classic. I can't remember. I think I gave it a four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. As a kid, Peter Pan was one of my favorite characters like of all time. I used to dress up as Peter Pan a lot. And I used to have a little like Peter Pan hat with like the red feather uh, from Disneyland and it had my name embroidered on the back and I just loved it so much. I love Peter Pan. He is literally one of my favorite characters. The movie is one of my favorite movies. The ride at Disneyland is one of my favorite rides at Disneyland ever. It's just gorgeous. And yeah, you know, I really enjoyed it. It was a nice, quick read. It was very, very simplistic. I really wasn't expecting that. It was almost more simplistic than I wanted it to be. I kind of wanted it to be a little more in depth, but I, I could see, you know, how it's a children's book. So, you know, there's not too much that you can expect from it, but I really did enjoy it. So I'm really glad that I got to listen to it. And it was just, it was a good time. I really enjoyed it. The next book I read in the month of February was The Thief by Megan Waylon Turner and I gave this book a four out of five stars. It's a very good beginning to a series. I actually did recently hear that supposedly you could read these almost out of order because they're kind of standalones in a series if that makes any sense but I don't think I'd recommend you doing that. This is definitely a very good setup to the world and you know characters and history and stuff like that. It's super short so it's not that long of a read and it's pretty simplistic in language and themes and plot and stuff like that. It's not a super hard book at all. It definitely reminded me of Throne of Glass which I mean this book did come out before Throne of Glass so technically Throne of Glass reminds me of this book but you know what I mean. I really enjoyed it. I think it's a good solid beginning of a series. The next book I read was Pride by Amy Zaboy and I rated this five out of five stars and I 
absolutely loved it. It's one of my new favorite Pride and Prejudice adaptations. It was absolutely phenomenal. Such a good retelling. And oh, just this cover is so beautiful. I love the bronze and then the inside is like blue and it's gorgeous. Also, I just want to quickly thank Alana for getting this for me from my wish list over, I think it was during Christmas. And that was so sweet because I absolutely loved this book so much. This is basically, you know, a retelling of Pride and Prejudice. So you guys kind of probably know the story of Pride and Prejudice by now. You know, it's about Lizzie and Darcy and it's kind of hate to love and Lizzie's pride, Darcy's prejudice. Very good. And I absolutely love this. If you if you if you like the Lizzie Bennet diaries, I feel like this is going to be right up your alley. It just every, the entire time I was reading this book, I just wanted to watch the Lizzie Bennet diaries because it reminded me so much of it. And it was so good. It's not like similar in any way. But I think it's that the fact that it's like a modern retelling of Pride and Prejudice that like really reminded me of it. But I loved this so much. It's set in Brooklyn and it follows a Lizzie that is Afro Latinx and the rich family moves in across the street and that's the Darcy's and you know the the boy and the girl they don't really you know hit it off very well and there's a lot of tension and it's really great and I just love this book so much. And it's super short so it's a super fast read. You're gonna fly through this. I did not want to put this book down like I was actually walking through a store reading this book because I could not put it down for like a second. I wanted to know what happened, which is so surprising because I know what happens. Like, I think I made an update on Goodreads that I was like, me knowing the plot of Pride and Prejudice is like, what's gonna happen? Oh my gosh, mind blown. I'm like, I know what happens. Also, the Wickham in this book, I... I always want to beat up the Wickham, but right here, I was just like, he's really testing me. I just, oh my god, I was so mad. I hate every George Wickham character. Oh my god, they make me so mad. So, you know, if you hate George Wickham too, you're gonna love this book because you can really hate him in this one. And yeah, so I really enjoyed this. And if even if you haven't read Pride and Prejudice, I've never read it. I've only seen like a bunch of adaptations of it. So if you haven't read Pride and Prejudice, it's not a big deal. You're not gonna be lost, but you will be surprised. So, you know, check this book out, regardless of if you read the source material. And you're gonna love it, I promise. The next book I read in February is one of my new all-time favorite books ever, and that is A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kamerer. And oh my gosh, let me tell you guys, this book is absolutely phenomenal. It is so good. It is one of my new favorite fantasy books of all time. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. It's modern. It's so good. This fantasy book is just absolutely phenomenal. It blew my mind. I could not put it down. I was so obsessed with it and the characters are so beautifully done. If you want a really good, it, I mean, I don't want to say that this is character based or whatever, but it like it has a good balance of characters and plot like the plot is really good the characters are even better I would say and the character development in this book is bar none like literally it has no equal this book is so good at character development I was my mind was blown and the thing that I really liked about the character development especially as a Beauty and the Beast retelling I feel like a lot of people give Beauty and the Beast retellings a bad rep being like Belle changes the beast or it gives people like an unrealistic expectation that you can change guys or whatever. No, this is not the case in this book and it is just so good. It's like probably just one of the best Beauty and the Beast retellings because of that fact. Like the character development for each character is so strong but it's also not really based on like anyone changing anyone else or changing for anyone else. It's always for like the betterment of themselves and like them kind of coming to terms with things or them finding out certain things and the character I just cannot stop talking about the character development it is so good like just read this book trust me it is amazing like I I think I've only seen like a few like maybe a handful of people 
not really, you know, get into this book that much. But for the most part, I've seen a lot of people really, really love it. And it's for a reason. It's so good. Also, the main character has cerebral palsy. And I've heard from other people who have cerebral palsy that the rep is really good. So, I mean, you know, take that with a grain of salt because I don't have that. So I can't really speak on the rep very well. However, you know, try it out, see if it's for you. And I just, I loved it so much. I loved getting to see that representation because that's really not something I've ever seen in any book, like ever, especially not a fantasy book. Like pretty stereotypically fantasy books are pretty bad at diversity, but this was actually pretty darn good. Like I was really genuinely surprised about it and really impressed. So Bridget Kamara really, really went hard on this book. She did such a good job and I cannot wait for the sequel. I need it so bad. The next book I read was an arc that I got from NetGalley and that was What Makes Girls Sick and Tired by Lucille de Pesoli? Pesol? Pes I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I'm pretty sure she's French and I'm not good at pronouncing French words or names. So I'm really sorry about that. And as you can see, I had to look down at the title to actually like get it all together in my brain. Basically, this is a feminist graphic novel. It's an introduction to feminism. So if you're really not into that, then maybe this could be for you. I gave it a three out of five stars because I just wasn't super impressed by it. It felt a little short. It seemed more kind of like a picture book rather than a graphic novel and I just wasn't really into it. You know, it's it's a lot of stuff that I already know and it tried to kind of be inclusive and it didn't really hit the mark for me. I wasn't super impressed by it altogether so yeah I think the three out of five stars is a pretty fair rating. Even though I rated this book four out of five stars, this is one of my new favorites and that is Vasa in the Night by Sarah Porter. And I am so glad I kept this book and decided to read it. And it was just so amazing. It's a super short book. I think it's only about like maybe 300 pages and it is just absolutely fantastic. It is, it blew my mind when I read it. Basically, it really gives off kind of like Twilight Zone, No Sleep Podcast vibes. Like if you like the No Sleep Podcast or if you've ever listened to it, you'll probably really like this book. Basically, it's a retelling of a Russian folklore tale called Vasilisa the Beautiful. And in this book, Vasa is kind of like an orphan. She lives with her two other sisters. One of her sisters is like a half sister. And then the other sister is kind of just a sister through like association, adoption. I don't know what you would call that. And they all live together in New York, but this New York is kind of a more, you know, darker, grungier kind of New York and it's very magical as well. There's a lot of magic in this world and Vasa also has a little doll that has come to life and it's kind of like her little companion and this is such like an interesting weird book. It's so difficult to explain and I didn't know anything about Vasilisa the Beautiful before I went into this book so it was kind of a learning curve a little bit of like trying to understand what was going on but once I figured it out it was super interesting. So basically there is this like convenience store kind of like a CVS or a Rite Aid or a Walgreens or whatever you have in like your city your town and it has like this <laughs> and it has like this fence around the parking lot and there are spikes and on all the spikes are decapitated heads and basically those are the heads of the people who have been quote unquote caught stealing in the store and there are a pair of bodiless hands that like follow you around the store and make sure that you're not stealing. It is the craziest, weirdest book I've ever read, but it was so much fun. Like it was also kind of terrifying. Like the way that Sarah Porter describes the store and describes everything that's going on, especially with this store and with like the decapitated heads. There's also this guy on a motorcycle that's like kind of, you know, driving around the parking lot, like being a guard or whatever. And it's like actually terrifying. Like when the house was settling around me at night, I actually jumped. Like I was like actually scared and I couldn't walk down the dark hall in my house 
it was just I this book was like it got inside my brain it was so good and I feel like I'm not doing it justice by talking about it it was literally terrifying there's just something about her writing that really makes it like haunting like it really makes it seem like this is real like this is something that could happen and then I have to remind myself like no this would never happen but anyway I really enjoyed this book I thought it was so fantastic and I really want to write like a whole review on it so hopefully I can get that up at some point and if you follow me on Twitter, you'll definitely see when I post a review of this book and it will go on my blog. So I just have so many feelings about this book. It was so good. The characters were interesting. I loved Vasa. I loved her doll companion friend. And I don't know, I just, I, it was such an interesting book and it was so much story in one short little book. And I 100% recommend it. It might not be for everyone, so I would be wary of that. But I feel like if you go into it with an open mind, you might really like it. The next book I read was The Last of August by Brittany Cavallero. And I gave this book obviously a 5 out of 5 stars. I didn't actually rate it because it's a reread. But it's always going to be a 5 out of 5 stars. It could literally be a 10 out of 5 stars because this is my favorite book in the series so far. And I love it so much. This is the second book in the Charlotte Holmes series and this time around I ended up reading it on audiobook from Scribd and it was fan-freaking-tastic. I love these audiobooks. They're so good. If you are gonna get into this series I totally recommend it on audiobook. It is so good and basically this is following Jamie and Charlotte after the events of the first book so I can't really get too much into this one but it really dives deeper into their lives, into their backstories, into their family history, especially with the Moriarty's and it is just so good. It's as I said my favorite one. We're also kind of matching today with the green, the green theme that's going on. So yes I really enjoyed this one. Definitely my favorite out of the series. I'm really interested in seeing if A Question of Holmes will take the spot but I don't know we'll see it's coming out soon. The next book I read was actually another poetry collection and that was Goddess of the Hunt by Shelby Eileen and I gave this poetry collection five out of five stars. I really really enjoyed it. This one had a very strong like narrative throughout the entire collection. I really enjoyed almost every single poem and I really feel that Shelby is growing with every single poetry book that comes out and this one was definitely my favorite so far. And I can't wait to get into Sunfish. I have it on my shelf. I still haven't gotten into it, but I think that I will get into it this month. So hopefully I'll do that. But Goddess of the Hunt is really a poetry collection that I definitely recommend to you guys. And I don't know, I just really loved it. It was so good. It was a lot about like Greek mythology and it just really resonated with me. I really love Greek mythology and it just felt like a poetry collection that was like really like catering to my favorite things, my aesthetic. <laughs> the next book I read was The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo and I read this on Scribd as well. You know, it was an audiobook. It was so good. I really, really love experiencing poetry as an audiobook. It is just so good and this was no exception. I literally read this in one sitting. It was amazing. I could not put it down. I just wanted to know what happened and the way that she developed the story was just so beautiful and it almost felt like it was just like a normal book just like written as a as a novel instead of like a novel in verse it was just so well done and I really really enjoyed it and I'm really glad that I ended up listening to everyone who really loved this book because for a while I was like I don't know I'm not really into poetry that much I'm not really into novels in verse I find them hard to read but once I read it as an audiobook I found it it was super easy and I just absolutely loved it. I flew through it. I really love the main character. Ziomara is really amazing. I love the slam poetry. And yeah, I just totally recommend it. Even if you are like kind of hesitant about getting into a novel with verse, I totally recommend at least just trying it out. And I ended up rating it five out of five stars. So obviously I really, really enjoyed it. The next book I read was also an arc from Nat Galley and that was In a Dream You Saw a Way to Survive by Clementine Von Radix. And I gave this one a four out of five stars. And it was kind of a very simplistic 
poetry collection. It wasn't anything super outstanding. The poems were a bit more long form, which is kind of what I enjoy, especially I enjoy writing long form poetry, just like longer verses and stuff like that. It was definitely a little less modern poetry and a little more classic kind of, but I really enjoyed it. The themes were a little, you know, no, I don't want to say stereotypical, but they were just kind of like themes that I see a lot in poetry. So it wasn't anything super new or groundbreaking, but it was definitely a poetry collection that was enjoyable. So I would recommend it based on that. And yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I don't really have too much to complain about it. The next poetry collection I read was Please Don't Go Before I Get Better by Madison Kuhn. And I ended up giving this one a three out of five stars. I was super unimpressed by it. It didn't really sound like poetry to me. And I just didn't really see where the story was going. It felt like it was repeating itself a lot and talking about the same story a lot and not in any sort of different way than it had before. So it just felt super repetitive and it got really, really slow at parts. And I just, I wasn't really impressed by it at all. I really love the cover of it and it's gorgeous, but I just wasn't impressed by the contents. It just wasn't really up to par. I feel like especially now with so many good modern poets out there, you kind of have to, you know, go a step above. And this was just kind of middle of the road. It was a little mediocre and I just wasn't super into the poetry. The next poetry collection I read was Sometimes Love is in You by Alexis B. Mendez. And I really love this poetry collection. I gave it a four out of five stars. And it was really, really beautiful. And I really loved a lot of the self-love themes that were in it. And I felt like the narrative was really there. It didn't seem to deviate too much from the overall narrative, which was really nice. And even though a lot of the poems were about self-love and about love being within you, it never really felt too repetitive, which was super nice as well. But there's definitely a very, very clear theme throughout the entire collection. And yeah, I just really loved this poetry collection. This is definitely a representation of really good modern poetry, which I love modern poetry. So a lot of it is really good, but I definitely love this collection. I would love to see more poetry from Alexis. And yes, I just, I really enjoyed it. The second to last book that I read this month was The Case for Jamie by Brittany Cavallero. I also read this on script as an audiobook and I loved it so much. This was definitely one that I was really interested in reading as an audiobook because it's told from dual perspectives, which really isn't the case for the first two books. So it's only this book and it's told from Jamie and Charlotte's point of views. And this is the one where I kind of have a love hate relationship with it a little bit, just a little bit, mostly because Jamie and Charlotte are kind of separate in this book. Um, but I do really love getting to know more about Charlotte and getting to be inside of her head a little bit more because in the first two books you have really only Jamie's perspective. So you're seeing everything through Jamie's eyes. You're experiencing everything, you know, with his emotions and stuff like that but you're never really getting Charlotte's emotions or experiences or point of view. And I really love getting to hear from Charlotte. I, she's one of my all time favorite characters and she's just absolutely wonderful. I love her kind of like her dryness. I just love everything about that because you don't really see that a lot from female characters. It's something that's definitely really unique, which is kind of sad because I really like that characteristic from female characters. So it was definitely good to hear more from Charlotte. And I loved it the second time around. It was so good and definitely a series that you should read as an audiobook. Woo! I've been filming for like 40 minutes already and I am tired, but we're finally to the last book. And I kind of saved the best for last, I think. And that is Enchante by Gita Trelise. And this came out in February and I absolutely loved it so much. I was so nervous that I wasn't going to like this book, that I had hyped it up too much in my head, that I was too excited for it. But this book really came through. Gita Trelise really came through. She went in hard. This book is absolutely beautiful. The writing is gorgeous. The plot, the setting, the characters are gorgeous. I really love the way that she wove in French throughout this book, but didn't really like 
she didn't oversimplify it she didn't really explain it too much which was really nice i did actually realize at the very end of the book that there was a glossary of the words but i found that i actually kind of liked not looking at the glossary for that so it was super interesting i love the plot for this book there's a lot of gambling a lot of hot air balloons a lot of magic and it's just absolutely enchanting you know, like the title. And it was just so good. I really, really enjoyed this. I had such a good time reading it and getting to know these characters. I think that this is a standalone. I might be wrong. It might be a series. Let me know if I'm right or wrong. <laughs> Basically, this is about a girl named Camille and her sister and her brother. They're all living in like kind of almost poverty and they have to find a way to support themselves. Her brother is kind of a drunk and a gambler and he's gambled all of their money away. So it's kind of put upon Camille to start earning money and finding ways to get money. So basically what she's been doing, she has magic. So she's been turning nails into coins to try to get bread or food or whatever she needs. And that really hasn't been working out too well for her. So she decides that she's going to start using her magic to transform herself into a lady of the court. And she's going to go to Versailles and she's going to start gambling at Versailles. But also while this is happening, she meets a boy who is really into hot air balloons and she ends up saving him in like almost a hot air balloon crash. And I just really love the way that these two plots kind of are running parallel to each other. And then they start to kind of grow a little more into, you know, a V shape, I guess, <laughs> to where they kind of cross paths. And it was just done so well. And in a way that once it finally happened, you were like, oh my gosh, wow. Like I didn't, you know, not that I didn't expect it. It was just like, I expected it, but even when it happened, it was just like it blew my mind and I was like not ready for it. So I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed the plot and I loved the magic. The magic system is a little weird, but I kind of liked it. I didn't really need for it to be too explained, which is why I really like this book because she doesn't explain the magic too much, which is really nice for me. Like, I don't need you to explain the magic or spoon feed it to me or anything. I feel like it's a little contrived, but this did it really, really well. Didn't give you too much explanation. Didn't try to like, you know, quantify it or anything. It was just magic. That's just what it was. And I really enjoyed it. Kind of reminded me of The Night Circus a little bit. So kind of gave off those vibes. If you really like that book, you might really enjoy this one. So yeah, I gave it a five out of five stars. One of my new favorites. <sighs> All right, I am finally done. I feel like my voice is gonna leave. I've been filming for over 40 minutes. I cannot believe how many books I read this month. 20 books, it was just absolutely such an amazing month. Thank you, Mayana, for putting on the booktube games. It was so much fun and I cannot wait to participate in another one. I might not go as hard, but you never know. I'm kind of a competitive person. So I feel like that's why I read like 20 books this month when I was only planning on reading like 10. But I had a really, really great reading month. I'm super proud of myself and I hope you guys enjoyed this wrap up. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.